Hey guys, welcome to tutorial number three of our Silk Plus tutorials. Uh, last time we looked at the Fibonacci sequence in uh, parallel using the Silk Spawn and Silk Sync. Today we're going to look at the Silk 4 keyword, which is kind of similar. Well, Silk 4 actually utilizes Silk Spawn and Silk Sync, but um, we're going to take a little bit more of a closer look at it in this video. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to our Fibonacci uh, file here. Um, let's just get rid of all these comments up here. We don't really need them. Um, we don't need these anymore. We still want to be able to time our stuff, so we're going to leave this timing code down here. Um, so this will be our serial timing, and this will be our parallel timing. Um, now, what we want to do is for our silk 4 example. Uh, let's just make an index. And we're going to go just make a regular for loop that'll do some work basically. Um, let's make it let's make it to let's make it 500, why not? And then we're going to go do work. So let's specify do work function, um, void do work. Basically all this is going to do is just going to do another for loop. Let's make it go up to uh, 50,000. And let's make it, let's just make it add, we could just make it add something. There, basically just loop 50,000 times, add, add two numbers, it doesn't really matter what number, add two numbers together, and ba basically this will just keep the, this will just keep the CPUs, the threads running for a bit. Alright, so, we're going to want to put this into our timing, wrap it into our timers, so, get rid of that. There we go. And down here. And again, uh, we don't need to declare i anymore. So there we go. So here's our serial implementation with a regular for loop. But over here, we're going to go silk for. So now what this is going to do is this is going to. It's basically going to break up our loop into chunks and then execute each chunk in parallel. So it's going to spawn as many threads as we need in order to do these iterations. And the way that it works is a little bit complicated, but if we go over to the Silk website, it's going to explain it in a little bit more detail. So over here it's kind of explaining a little bit of, of the difference of, of why uh, why we're going to use a silk for rather than silk spawn and silk sync in here. Uh, the pictures here aren't loading for whatever reason, but if we go up to the main website, go to the reference manual documentation, go to the keywords, silk for, scroll down a little bit. Okay, here we go. So here's what the difference is between doing a silk for where it it's basically like a merge sort approach you you split the for loop into equal chunks and you execute them in parallel and as they return they they're nice and neat um, if you do it with just a silk spawn and a silk sync you're gonna get like an, a lot more overhead because what you're doing is for every single iteration you're doing a spawn instead of doing it half and half like this and therefore it you're just gonna get a lot more overhead and it's gonna take a little bit longer because of the way that you're calling these threads if you use a silk 4 it's gonna be a lot more 
efficient because it's basically splitting everything in half, just like a merge sort approach. Um, and if you look at the rest of this, it goes like into much greater detail about how how it works and what the restrictions are. But one of the important parts are is right here. Um, it also goes into a little bit of a definition about the grain size. Uh, basically, a grain size in uh, Silk Plus is defining how how long to go until you run things in serial. So, in in essence, um, you don't have to specify what Silk Spawn or what Silk Plus is going to do. Is it's going to calculate? It's it's basically going to predict the value for your grain size based on how many uh, loop iterations you have and how many workers you have. So you really don't need to specify it on your own unless you know what you're doing. Um, but if you do want to specify it on your own, you can go pragma silk grain size and then specify the grain size. Um, but yeah, behind the hood, when you do run a silk 4, it basically runs this. So what it does is it checks if the if we're already um, to if we're already past our grain size like our threshold that's when we want to just do a regular serial for loop otherwise if we can still if we're still allowed to split it up we're going to split the loop iterations right in the middle and then we're going to do silk spawn and then run the loop so that's basically how the, and then it's going to do silk sync later on. Um, so that's basically what the silk 4 does under the hood. Uh, so let's go back uh, over to our project here. So we have our do work method. We have our silk 4 right here. Uh, we're displaying our results for the silk 4. And then we're doing the same exact thing in serial, and we're going to display our results for our serial. So just so we get a good idea of the time difference. So go ahead and build it. Oh, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, we don't need to print the results anymore. But we still want to specify that this is parallel. We still want to specify that this one is serial. There we go. Sorry about that. Build and run. Do Control F5. Make sure you're not going into um, make sure you're not going into debug mode. So yeah. So parallel calculated in 0.3 seconds, and serial is calculated in 0.4 seconds. Oh, but it's actually not using 16 workers. Sorry about that. We don't want to add this in here. Let's clean this up a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So run it again, and I think it went a little bit quickly, so you won't, so you weren't, you weren't able to see that this was all going to 100%. But let's try it one more time. Yeah, it didn't really have to. So in parallel, oh, 0.08 seconds. So yeah, uh, another thing is that the reason why it went um, a little bit longer the first time we did it is because of the scheduling. So the little bit of overhead that you get is when you want to set up your threads and your scheduler uh, that will actually add a little bit more time and overhead when you do things in serial um, when you do things in parallel rather than serial so that's one thing that you want to think about if you're doing um, some really like if you're not doing a lot of heavy work it might be worth it to just do it in serial because you would be sacrificing some extra time for the overhead of setting up the threads and the scheduling to do things in parallel. So unless you're doing a lot of work, you're not going to want to do it in parallel because when you run it for the first time, it's going to have a lot of overhead and you're going to have a lot of um, a lot of scheduling uh, time added to your to your uh, processing. So in this example, since we ran it for a second time, it ran much much quicker. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this up to like 50,000. 50,000. Let's just see um, if we could get our threads in parallel to go to 100. 
there we go. Now they're going to 100. So now we, we know for sure that um, this is going to take a lot less time than our serial version uh, because we're doing more heavy work now. Um, so yeah, this is, clearly it, it's still running and it's been more than four and a half seconds. So it's a huge difference uh, doing things in parallel rather than serial. It's still going. Looks like CPU CPU four is doing all the work right now. I may or may not have picked too high a number. Oh yeah, okay, so there we go. So 42 seconds. That's almost 10 times slower than our parallel implementation. So I hope that gives you a good idea of the amount of time that you can save by using a Silk 4 rather than regular 4.